Hi, my name is Cold Bear, and let's start with Frostpunk. If you ever had a dream to make children work in the mines, this game will fulfill this dream of yours in no time. Frostpunk is a city management and building game, but with heavy survival elements and resource management mechanics, you will be in charge of a steampunk society that survived the collapse of civilization. But sometimes it's better to perish with the others than to be governed by a maniac like you. Just remember those children you sent into the mines. Anyway, you know, their hands are tiny, but they are fast. Some of them might die, their parents will organize a coup against you, but, you know, you can't rebel if you are dead. You know, you rebel, you die. Also, in this way, you will have less people to feed. Everything falls in place like mayonnaise on the potato salad. Since the premiere, Frostpunk has been enriched with a number of updates. Now you can enjoy the new Endless mode that increases the game's replayability. There is also a new scenario, the Fall of Winter Home, that further expands the game's universe and lore. And for the dessert, they added things like naming characters and all automatons, and finally a photo mode. The game has about 90% of positive review score on Steam and is great for everyone who likes to dive into a post-apocalyptic world and make it better. Or worse, way worse. SnowRunner well, this is officially a realistic driving game, about getting from point A to point B while transporting various cargo. But I would rather call it a Souls-like roguelite puzzle game. Of course, not in the real terms, but rather metaphorically, because the game is insanely hard and you will be doing the same task again and again. Basically, here you have to drive a heavy load truck to the appointed destination. But the trick here is that the road is not what you normally expect. You will have to deal with snow and mud, ice, rivers, fallen trees, and so on. And if you get stuck for real, that's kinda it, you will have to try again. And of course, avoid mistakes of the past. Which you can't in real life. You know, all the mistakes you made in your life led you to this very moment where you watch my video. Yeah, well, honestly, if you would have done something differently, you could have ended up in a lava lake instead, or in the belly of a shark. So maybe your decisions were not that bad. Pat yourself on the shoulder. Traveler's Rest this is a tavern management game where you can brew your own beer, run a farm and build relationships. You are an innkeeper on a journey to transform a rundown tavern into a bustling social space. Based in a cheerful fantasy setting, Traveler's Rest is a place to meet people, explore new places and uncover ancient magic. Along your journey you'll discover new things to brew, farm, cook and build to create your perfect fantasy tavern. The game is still in early access but has more than 90% of positive reviews. People on Steam are saying that this game is awesome and if you like titles like Stardew Valley, it's a must-play. Also, you can smack angry customers away with your mop. Moonlighter here you are a shopkeeper who wants to keep your customers happy by providing them with various goods. You can put items on sale, set their price carefully, manage gold reserves, recruit assistants and upgrade the shop. But be careful though, some shady individuals may want to steal your precious wares. The trickiest part is getting the goods. You have to swim over river Namunas to Kaliningrad, get contraband and then swim back to European Union to get rich. No, of course I'm kidding. You have to go to ancient passages to different realms and dimensions, fight various enemies and collect items from their dead called maimed bodies. So romantic. Anyway, here the part where you hack, slash and die begins. People on Steam are saying that the game is fun, aesthetically pleasing and relaxing. Yeah, relaxing. So forget about big challenges, it's an easier game in general. But hey, it's nice to have something not souls like hardcore from time to time after all. Dying Light 2. Stay human. Playing this game while being sober was an act of heroism on my side. You know why? Because this game is scary and it amplified my anxiety levels. They went up through the roof while I was playing it. Speaking about roofs, most of the time you will parkour and climb on them. I played the game for more than 10 hours and in those hours I spent about 5 minutes on the ground. I don't even know if the city itself is beautifully done. There's no need to go down, it's too dangerous. That's what she said. And you often bump into a dead end with two high, unjumpable walls. And that is a bit inconvenient when you are running from a herd of brain-thirsty zombies and the level of your anxiety is melting your brain down. It's a fun game to try, but do not expect miracles. For me, the deciding factor to leave it and never go back was degrading weapons. You can kill like 10 zombies with one weapon and then it breaks, so you can't have a favorite weapon here. That is really terrible. I made a review video back then and gave it 6 cold beers out of 10. Now I'm thinking, because it's on sale, for this price, maybe 7 is a more accurate score. Anyway, the price is still kind the high. Be cautious, read the comments. Crashlands 
In this open-world survival crafting game you are a galactic trucker whose latest shipment gets derailed, leaving you stranded on an alien planet. As you hustle to get back your packages, you'll become involved in a nefarious plot of world domination, which will require all of your wits to overcome. You'll learn recipes from the local sentient life, make new friends, uncover ancient secrets and fight deadly bosses. You can also tame everything and build yourself a home away from home as you learn to thrive in this unforgiven world. People on Steam are saying that the game is entertaining with funny dialogue and challenging combat. Almost 90% of the reviews are positive. Children of Mota this is an action RPG with a roguelite approach to character development where you don't play a single character, but a whole family of heroes. You will hack and slash through hordes of enemies in procedurally generated dungeons, caves and lands and lead the family with all their flaws and virtues against the forthcoming corruption. Although I must warn you that this game is not for everyone. For example, I don't like stories about cute cozy families, about love and similar drama. This kind of genre mixing is weird, I actually have no idea who is the the target audience of this game. Well, you might like it after all. About 90% of reviews are positive, so it may be your spoon of potato salad. And I… I would give it 5 warm milks out of 10. So this is the rare occasion where my score and public score is not even close. This war of mine. Here you will take care of a group of civilians trying to survive in a besieged city. Struggling with lack of food, medicine and constant danger from snipers and hostile scavengers, the game provides an experience of war seen from an entirely new angle. The pace of the game is imposed by the day and night cycle. During the day, snipers outside stop you from leaving your refuge, so you need to focus on maintaining your hideout, crafting, trading and taking care of your survivors. And at night, take one of your civilians on a mission to scavenge through a set of unique locations for items that will help you stay alive, you know, like medicine or a box of beer. Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey. This is a really original and truly amazing game where you play as an ape. Yeah, your journey starts 10 million years ago and by then we still shared our ancestors with gorillas and chimpanzees. Our last common ancestor with the apes, chimpanzees to be exact, is known to be roughly about 5 million years old. So you start as an ape and over the years evolve into an early human. The whole game spans from 10 million to 2 million years ago. Your task is for you and your tribe not to die and not to choose the path of extinction. The future of humanity is in your hands, like literally. It's a wonderful game reminding us that we are just starting to go on our evolutionary path as human species. 2 million years is nothing. Dinosaurs existed for 165 million years before they all died out. Except the birds of course add another 65 million years to that big number. That is a huge difference. Not as huge as your mama though. Anno 1404 History Edition so here you'll be time traveling back to the good old medieval days, but without all the smelly stuff. It's really a blessing that we can smell things through our screens. The game is all about building and ruling your very own kingdom, so it's like SimCity on a knight's diet. So get ready to flex those management muscles of yours as you build majestic cities, juggle resources and expand your empire. It's like playing medieval Tetris, except the blocks are buildings and they do not annihilate if you build them in a row. That, that's a good thing. So it's not like... Tetris. Oh, shut up. And the best part is diplomacy. Forge alliances with other rulers, negotiate trade deals and maybe even send a bowl of potato salad to some neighbor. Although, be warned, it is a Ubisoft game, so as always it is polluted with a Ubisoft launcher that may prevent you from even launching the game. Verily, believe you me, my good friend, my own eyes beheld some dread-inducing comments upon your Steam. So, read them all. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands You'll embark on an epic adventure full of whimsy, wonder and high-powered weaponry. Bullets, magic and broadswords collide across this chaotic fantasy world brought to life by the unpredictable Tiny Tina, which is your disorderly guide through this realm where rules rarely apply. You'll explore a vast overworld spanning majestic cities, dank mushroom forests and epic fortresses. You can choose your own multi-class hero and loot, shoot, slash and cast your way through outlandish monsters and loot-filled dungeons. Take on a quest to stop the tyrannical Dragon Lord and show everyone who's the real boss is. Well, as always, probably not you. You can play it alone or co-op with a friend. Although it has mostly positive review score on Steam, so if you are not made of money, I suggest you put the game into your wishlist and wait for a bigger discount. Monument Valley 
He will embark on a journey as Ida, the silent princess, through impossible environments and illusionary puzzles. He will experience this meditative and calming puzzle game by manipulating monuments and creating evolving paths to explore new, surreal and mysterious worlds. So basically you will solve tricky but immensely satisfying puzzles with optical illusions at their core, evolve landscapes to reveal pathways that would have otherwise been impossible, and as you progress discover beautiful architecture transforming landscapes through pushing, pulling, clicking, raising, lowering and more. 98% of positive reviews is not a thing you can easily ignore. So don't. Gloom. Here, yeah, afflicted by severe amnesia, you drift deep into the common dream. You scour for the lost pages of the Necronomicon, while clinging on on any little purpose you have left. Faced with mad dreamers and horrible abominations, like, you know, people who like pineapple in their potato salad, and eldritch deities, you feel drawn to the dark abyss deep within. The game is inspired by H.P. Lovecraft, but has an original story. Here you'll find a wide array of weapons, items and foes offering tons of unique, compelling scenarios. Also procedural level structure that ensures endless replay value. People on Steam are saying that the game has a great story, a bit clunky combat and, you won't like this, a permadeath. Yeah, if you die, then you die, and the only thing you get for it is a bunch of tokens to start a little stronger next time. Gloom has a very positive review score on Steam and the price is more than nice. Titan Souls the game is like a boss battle bonanza, and you are the brave little hero taking on these giant normals bad boys. So prepare for some epic battles that'll test your skills, reflexes and patience. It's a Souls-like game, so lots and lots of patience. The game is packed with 20 colossal titans, each with its own unique and challenging boss fight. You'll be like, 20 titans? That's more boss battles than I have fingers. Well, at least some of you would say that. So shout out to you, my fingerless friend. Now subscribe, use something else for this task. Titan Souls typically takes around 4-6 to six hours to complete, depending on your skill level. Although if you are like me, a bit slow with these kind of games, it probably will take longer. Way longer. The Wandering Village this is a city-building simulation game. In a world where mysterious plants are spreading all over the earth and emitting toxic spores as they grow, a group of people seek shelter on the back of a giant wandering creature. Here you have to become their leader, build settlement and form a symbiotic relationship with the creature to survive together. Well, I hope that you can be really helpful for the creature, because, you know, otherwise those people are just parasites living on its back and you are the leader of parasites. That doesn't sound so dreamy and glamorous, right? Well, you help the creature to get rid of the evil plants, but I doubt that it is a good deal for the creature. You know, people are pooping and dying and planting stuff on your back. It's a colony of horror from the perspective of that dinosaur thing. Anyway, the game has around 90% of positive review score, but it is an early access, so some features are probably missing. Lumencraft this is a combination of a top-down shooter and base-building game with tower defense elements. Here you'll enter procedurally generated levels with a fully destructible environment. You will build your base, dig some tunnels and find the precious lumen, humanity's only chance for survival, a crystal of high energy that may be the last chance for the mankind. Your people established an underground settlement and went into the dark to reach the nearby deposits, but the darkness consumed them as the subterranean caves and tunnels hold as much danger as salvation. Now it's time for you to step into the endless shadows and show all that darkness who the real boss is. As always, probably not you. Old World a really nice game for Civilization and Crusader Kings fans. It is an historical strategy game where you lead your empire through multiple generations, building a grand legacy to last beyond your own years. Here each of the seven kingdoms has four noble families that provide various benefits when put in charge of your cities, so you will obviously have to marry for politics, raise your ass and manage your relationship with the other influential noblemen of your kingdom. So like in that movie I never saw with Vin Diesel, family is what matters here and if you want to be a strong group ruler, your family must be strong as well. So probably marriages between cousins or brothers and sisters here and there is what you actually want. You may think that this is just a simple clone of civilization, but the game actually takes about 40 hours to beat and contains 3000 unique events inspired by history and mythology. Review score hovers around 80% of positivity, so despite some minor things, all is good in this field. Rain World 
Here you are a slug cat. The world around you is full of danger and you must face it alone. Separated from your family in a devastating flood, you must hunt for food and shelter between terrifying torrential flows that threaten to drown all life. So you dream about being not a slug cat but a fish cat instead, but here your dreams, just like in real life, never become a reality. You will climb through the ruins of an ancient civilization, evade the jaws of vicious predators, and discover lands teeming with strange creatures and buried mysteries and of course, find your family before death finds you. And it would be all nice and all, but I can see a souls-like among the tags of the game. So be assured, be absolutely 100% warranted that death will find you. Not once, not twice, not three times, not... Well, you know what I mean. People on Steam are talking that Rain World has a very steep learning curve, but once you've mastered it, you start to feel unstoppable. Also, about 90% of positive review score is not a joke. Death's Door here you control a crow, some kind of bird grim reaper. Suddenly your assigned soul is stolen, and you must track down a desperate thief to a realm untouched by death, where creatures grow far past their expiry date and overflow with greed and power. Well, this place sounds like a parliament of every country. You will have a vast array of melee weapons, various arrows and powerful magic to overcome a fantastic bunch of beasts and demigods. The land is full of twisted inhabitants and countless secrets, just like parliament. Anyway, here you'll experience a samba yet darkly comedic tale, uncovering the secrets beyond the flaw of souls, the role of the crows, and the origin of the potato salad man himself. Well, probably not the latter, I'm just kidding. Or am I? Project Hospital You'll manage your very own hospital, it's a serious business without any funny diseases or events. Here you'll become an ace doctor, an aspiring architect, and a successful manager all at the same time. I especially like the details of this game, how you put a microscope on the table, how monitors are lit up only when the doctor is using them, and many many other similar things. You know how they say, the potato salad is in the details. Also this game has great educational value. I've seen actual doctors saying that this is a very impressive title. Well, honestly, anyone can introduce themselves as a doctor on the internet, so take this with a grain of salt. For example, I am a doctor as well, but I can cure only one disease, your eternal boredom. For that I have a vaccine of good games in my entertaining list. And speaking about this game, if you ever wanted to become an outstanding penis doctor, but the life ripped this chance out of your weak, limpy hands, this is your opportunity to at least take a glimpse at this glorious life you will never have. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you next time, bye!